We are here for the Church of Dallas at McKinney, another week by God's grace and mercy. <clears throat> We're going to be in the book of Luke today. Luke chapter 1. We're going to go into the Word of God and <clears throat> just go through this powerful story of uh, how Mary was chosen, how Joseph and Elizabeth, uh, Mary, and Zachariah was chosen. Luke chapter 1, I believe what the Lord uh, put on my heart to share today and what he's been kind of uh, just highlighting in this season that we're in right now. <clears throat> you are blessed and highly favored. You are blessed and highly favored. A lot of times, we don't know how blessed we are. And we don't, <clears throat> I guess we don't get that, that confirmation, I guess you could say, enough. Or that uh, reassurance of how blessed we are. So I feel like the Lord uh, today was telling us, you know, He wants the church to know, He wants His children to know how blessed we are. We are blessed. And highly favored, especially if you're in the Lord in these times. If you're a child of God right now, with all the darkness happening in the world, with all the chaos, with all the uh, plagues, the things that are hitting this earth, if you're still a child of God, you still believe that you're you're holding on to the Lord. You're blessed. You're blessed because many people have fallen away. Many people have turned away from the Lord. Many people have. Um, you know, they deny the faith. Unfortunately, we're just in that time, you know, I see a lot of people turning away from the faith, especially with COVID happening. A lot of people, you know, some people came in and it made them stronger, but then many people actually turned away from the Lord. People just, they stopped going to church, the churches were closed, so they just stopped seeking the Lord. And they just, you know, they, they were too distracted, you know. So, uh, we're just in an hour right now that I believe that we have to know how faith that we are. We're going to go into the book of Luke today. God bless you, Facebook family. Thanks for joining us. Um, we are uh, an end time ministry by God's grace. God has called us to raise up a uh, a generation, I guess you could say, of warriors, right? Uh, people who are soldiers, sold out for the Lord, sold out for Him in these last days, that are willing, that are prepared and willing to go through these tough times uh, with the Lord. And to do his work while we're doing that, right? So we're enduring till the end, like Jesus said. So we're going to go into the book of Luke. we got to be encouraged. we got to be strengthened in these last days to be able to make it through. God wants you to know how favored you are, how blessed you are to have life and to be chosen to live in this time. The time that we are living in. This is an amazing time to be alive. It Amen. is. Amen. 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 It is an amazing time to be alive. No matter what you see happening out there, believe me. You are blessed to be living right now. The question is, you know, just do you realize how blessed you are? Do you realize the opportunity that you have to serve the King of Kings, to serve the Lord of Lords in these times? Do you realize it? That's the question. I never supposed to move this back. It was okay. It's far. Well, you are dark. Yeah, I know. That's right. Let me move this back. So we're in a time right now that you have to know how blessed you are and how favored you are to be a child of God, to be chosen by God. Luke chapter 1, we like to go into the Bible, we like to go into the Word of God and let the Word of God speak. Luke chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 1, but I'm going to pray before we read. Father, we thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for a powerful time of worship. Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that your presence is so sweet. And we thank you, God. We just want to honor you and thank you for your presence. Thank you for being here with us, God. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for bringing us together today, our brothers and sisters here in the room, and those who are watching us online. Thank you. Father, for just 
another day that we woke up this morning, God, that we have a chance to come together and fellowship, that we have a, an opportunity to come before you and just sing praises to your name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. And we ask that you would pour out your spirit today. Let every single person that is discouraged today, maybe they're depressed, maybe maybe some people are suicidal, maybe they don't know who you are, maybe they haven't had an encounter with you, maybe they haven't had that revelation that you are real, that you are the God of all creation, that you've made them, you created them. Maybe they, don't, they haven't gotten that revelation yet. I ask, Father, that you would pour out your spirit on every single person that hears this message today. Those watching us, even on the replay, Father, I ask that you would touch them even right where they are. That they would feel your tangible presence, God. Because you're real, God. You're not, just, you're not a dead God. You're not these statues that people worship, God. You're real, and you're here with us. Father, we ask that you pour out your spirit today. Bless your people. Bring souls into the kingdom. Even save people's souls today, God. Use this message today for your glory and for your kingdom purposes. Holy Spirit, use you today. Minister to your people. In Jesus' mighty name. In the mighty and matchless name of Yeshua. Jesus, the Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. And all the believers said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, the book of Luke chapter 1, let's start at verse 1. Let's read down. The Bible says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect, perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee an order, most excellent Theophilus, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias, of the course of Abia, and his wife was the, of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. And they had no child, because that Elizabeth was barren, and they both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass that while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of the incense. And there, were, there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and feared fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and the power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zacharias said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel said unto him, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these glad tidings. And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believe not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. 
And the people waited for Zacharias and marveled that he tarried so long in the temple. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, for they perceived that he had not seen, that he had seen a vision in the temple. For he beckoned unto them, and remained speechless. And it came to pass that as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself five months, saying, Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me, to take away my reproach from among men. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to read a couple more verses here. So that's the story of Elizabeth and Zacharias and how they were chosen by God, right? They were chosen to birth John the Baptist, right? This is John the Baptist who was preparing the way for Jesus' coming. So this is a miracle. It says she was barren. And the angel comes and says, hey, I'm going to, well, the Lord is going to give you guys a baby. Even in your old age, God's going to give you a baby. So it happened according to the word of the Lord that the angel was speaking. You know, Gabriel was speaking this word from the Lord. And it happened exactly how the angel said. Yeah. Praise God. Verse 26 says, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive, conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth shall also has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For, God, for with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's word is powerful. I love to read the word because when you read the word, you're, you get, it's, the Bible says, uh, Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. You know, you're getting life, you get, it's the Holy Spirit. The word was written by men filled with the Holy Spirit. So the word of God is powerful. When we read it. So this is the story of Jesus, of how he came to earth. And Mary was chosen by God, it says. It says that she was blessed, and it says she was highly favored of God. It says in verse 28 that thou art highly favored. This is what the angel told Mary. Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Right? So he comes and gives her this word and tells her, hey, you're going to bear a son, and his name is going to be called Jesus. And she is chosen by God to do this, uh, this task, right? So she has to birth Jesus into the earth. But think about what she was thinking in her mind. She actually questioned and said, how, how am I going to do this? How is this going to happen for me? She actually questioned the same way Zacharias questioned. Say, Zacharias questioned also. And he became dumb, right? So this showed you how highly favored she was because Zacharias questioned and then the angel made him dumb, right? So it, obviously God was doing it through this angel, but he was made dumb, but obviously Mary was not made dumb. She asked the question, and 
she was not made dumb, right? But guess what? It's because she was highly favored, it says. She was highly favored of the Lord. Blessed art thou among women, the angel told him. So, what I want to point your attention to is in verse 36, the angel tells her something interesting. Because he's telling her that she's going to give birth by the Holy Ghost. Think about that. She's going to give birth by the Holy Ghost, not by the man, but by the Holy Ghost. So she's already got to be in her mind like, wait, what's going on? What are you talking about? How is that going to happen? But he tells her something. He tells her, behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, in verse 36, she has also conceived a son in her old age. She, she got her miracle. She was barren, but God gave her a miracle. So she has her, a baby now, and she's pregnant. It says This is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. So it says in verse 37, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Right? So what happened here is that Mary was chosen for this task to bring the Lord into the earth, and it was going to be a miracle. So the angel tells her, hey, God did a miracle with Elizabeth. She's your cousin. You should believe. You should believe that God is going to do it for you as well. God's going to do this miracle in your life. But he has chosen you for this task. You are blessed and highly favored. You are highly favored. And what after God is telling us today, I believe that God is saying to the church and to his people, right, his children, those who have been called out of the world, those who have surrendered, those who have been going through trials and tribulation, month after month, year after year, and you've been going through it, and God is encouraging you today. You are blessed and highly favored. You have been chosen for this time. You have been chosen to be part of his end time army, his end time warriors that he's raising up for souls to come in, to bring in the harvest of souls that's going to be coming in in these last days. Amen? Amen. Amen. So God is going to use you and I to win souls, to bring people into the kingdom. You are blessed and highly favored. But guess what? Mary did not know she was blessed and highly favored. She didn't, she didn't know how favored she was. It says that she said, what manner of salutation is this? He said, wait, what, what are you talking about in verse 29? He says, when she saw him, she saw this angel, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind, what manner of salutation, meaning what kind of greeting is this? You're over here talking about I'm blessed and highly favored. What are you talking about? She's just living her life. And she's just doing what she's supposed to be doing. But guess what? She didn't realize as she was walking in faith, she was believing God. She was a child of God. She was living for God, just like Zacharias and, and uh, Elizabeth. It says that they were perfect before God. I believe Mary was as well. Mary was doing what God wanted to do. God knew her heart. He knew that she had a heart for him, right? And God chose her because she was faithful in what she was doing. She was living for the Lord. She was faithful in her life, her service to God. And God knows that you've been faithful. God knows it hasn't been easy. It's been rough and you've gone through things, ups and downs. But guess what? God knows who are his. He knows those who have been, uh, you know, who have been knocked down and beaten and, 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 you know, just pummeled sometimes. He knows that. And God has allowed you to go, that, go through that for a reason. Right? It has made you stronger. Now you know who your God is. You know who has picked you up. You know how you've made it through. It's by the hand of the Lord. You know that it's God's strength. It's God's grace and God's mercy while you're still here. Amen? Amen. Right? So that's where we are right now. we got to know that God is highly, we are highly favored by God. We are blessed by God to be alive in this time. To be able to to stand and say, I am a child of God. This is a time that we have to boldly proclaim that we are children of God. We have to boldly proclaim that God has saved us. He saved us for a purpose, for a reason. And we now are going to walk in His glory, walk in His light, walk in His truth. So that people can see the, that we are in favor, that we are blessed. People are going to see that God's hand is on our lives. People are going to be encouraged in these dark times because they're going to see that we are blessed by God. So Mary was blessed. She was highly favored. It says she was chosen for this task. Some of us and some of you out there have been chosen by God for tasks. There are things that God wants you to do. There's 
plans that God has for your life. You have made, you maybe have made your own plan. Maybe you've, uh, you know, you've mapped out your life. But God will come in and interrupt that plan like he did with Mary. And he came and interrupted so that he could bring her into the plan that he had for her life. Right? So you could be going along in your own plan. And then at some point, God shows up and says, Hey, blessed and highly favored the Lord. You, he comes and tells you, you're, you're favored, you're blessed. I'm about to call you to do this task. I'm about to choose you to do this certain thing in the earth. Maybe God has called you to start a business. Maybe God has called you to start a church. Maybe God has called you to evangelize. Maybe he's called you to go on mission trips. Maybe God has called you to the music world. Maybe he's called you to television. Maybe he's called you to politics. Who knows? God calls people in different ways. We all have different callings. But God has a purpose for each one of us. And he has a calling on everybody's life. The Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. I believe that if you're still in the Lord right now, and I believe if you're still uh, you know, seeking God, you're alive, you have a calling on your life. And I believe that God has chosen you for this time. If you have ears to hear, God has chosen you. Because no, most people in this time don't have ears to hear. They're not willing to hear. They're not uh, open to receiving the truth of God. They're not ready to receive the truth of God. They're, they're, they're too busy and caught up with the world. They're caught up with the things of this life. So if you're hearing and you have ears to hear and you're hearing with us, saith the Lord, guess what? You've been chosen. You have been chosen by God. For this time, for this moment in history. Amen. 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 You've been chosen by God for this time. It's not a coincidence that you are hearing this message. It's not a coincidence that you have been led to hear this today. Whoever's hearing this, I believe that God has chosen you. I believe that God has called you for a purpose in this time. And he wants to use you for his glory. You see, Mary didn't understand how big, uh, you know, she didn't understand that her faithfulness to God was going to lead her to this kind of calling. He didn't, she did not know that she was going to be chosen to birth the Messiah. Think about that. You think she knew that? You think in her regular life she was living? And you think she knew, oh, I'm going to be chosen to do to, to birth the, the Messiah, the Christ. I'm going to be chosen to birth Jesus Christ, the Son of God. God come in the flesh. You think that she was, she knew that she was going to be chosen for that? No. She didn't. She was just being faithful in, the, in what she knew. And then God came and showed up. And I believe that God is coming. He's showing up in some of our lives right now. And he's saying, hey, blessed and highly favored, I've chosen you for this hour. I've chosen you for this moment to do something great. For me, for the king, for the Lord, for God. And God, all he expects when he comes and chooses you like Mary did. What did Mary say? It says in verse 38, Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And it says the angel left her. So, be it unto me. It means, she said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm surrendered. Yes, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, that's what I'm going to do. So, guess what? God chose her and she said yes. You see, many people, they get called by God or even sometimes they're chosen by God and God says, okay, let's go, time to do this. And you have to be willing. You have to say yes. And you have to be willing to work it out and, and, and walk it out. Walk out whatever God has called you to do and chosen you to do. God has chosen you. You are blessed and highly favored. Believe it, receive it, and then walk in whatever God is telling you to do. God is calling his people now to walk in power, to walk in victory, to walk with our in confidence, with our heads, our heads up high, not in pride, but in a place of knowing who we are, that we are blessed and highly favored of God. We are children of the Most High God. Amen. What do you have to be in fear of? What do you have to be afraid of? What do you have to be, you know, timid about? There's nothing that can hurt you. If God is for you, who can be against you, right? Yes, amen. Amen? Amen. amen? Who can be against you? Nothing and no one. 
If God is for you, no one can be against you. They may try, but you still got God for you, right? So they, believe me, God turns everything around in his time. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. God, God repays. And that's why God has chosen you. Because we've gone through seasons where people have been mean, rejected us, right? They put us down, they laughed at us, they mocked us. And what happened? We did not revile them back. We did not mock them back. We did not go, you know, try to be mean to them back. That's why God has chosen you. Because you did not fight back. You let the Lord handle it. You allowed the Lord to do what he needs to do. And work in your heart and work in the other person's heart. Or work in those people's heart. You see, that's who God wants. He wants people who have been in that secret place, being molded and shaped. Right? He is the potter. Right? He is the potter. We are the clay. So God has been molding us and shaping us, even through the trials and the tribulations, right? Because that's when you're being molded. That's when, that's when you're being, you're really becoming who God has called you to be. When you allow him to mold you and shape you, you allow him to bring you through these tests, these trials, these tribulations. You start to become Christ. You become, start to become like Christ. You start to walk in the fruits of the Holy Spirit through trials and tribulations. So some of these things you've been through, you think it's, uh, you know, it, it was, none of it is going to be lost. None of it is for, is going to go in vain. It's not going to go in vain because God had a purpose in the middle of those trials, even in the middle of those falls, right? The Bible says that a righteous man falls seven times, but then what? He gets back up. And you continue to get up. Amen. 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 You continue to get up. And that's what God wants. He just wants us to keep going. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep moving forward. Keep believing. Keep trusting. Keep walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. 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 That's how you have victory. Victory is already won. Christ already won it. He's already did it all. It was done at the cross. You just have to keep believing and walking in it. Amen. You just got to walk it out on this earth. No matter what the enemy tells you, no matter where the Spirit is talking to you, it don't matter. You just got to keep believing, keep trusting, keep walking, and know you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. You are blessed. So, God is encouraging us today. He wants to encourage his people. Because many have been wounded, they've been beaten down by the, this life and the trials and the testings. God tests those that are his, Right? You gotta go through the test. You gotta go through the, the, the molding and the shaping. But just like even Gideon, God showed up to Gideon and chose him. Said, You mighty man of valor. You called him a mighty man of valor. He's like, wait, who me? Who me? And that's what Mary was saying, basically, like, like, what are you blessed and highly favored? You feel like, she's like, who, who me? Right? So God chooses the least of these. He chooses. He chooses the people that the world would not expect. That's how you. That's how I would say it. He chooses the people. The Bible says that he uses the foolish things in this world to confound the wise, right? Amen. God uses the foolish things. The people, you may not have a college degree. You may not have the best, uh, uh, you know, uh, speech, right? You may not be able to talk like Moses. He was stuttering and he's like, Lord, me? me? Won't you choose me? Right? So you may have some kind of uh, born with a deformity. You never know. God uses foolish things to confound the wise. He uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. So believe that. You've got you to understand that. Because many times, I'll, I'm going to ask the Lord, like, why me, Lord? Why did you choose me? You know, you got you to know that God doesn't work the way the world works. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. The Bible says, who can know it? We don't know the mind of God. His, his mind, I mean, it's, it's unfathomable. We can't understand it. Right? But God, his ways will, will confound wise people. You think you're wise, and then God will show you that you're not wise. He will show you that you don't have the wisdom you think you have. Right? We're dust. We're nothing without God. He is everything, and we're nothing. We're dust, really. Right? Amen. So, we need God. And when you understand and you know that and you live that way, knowing that you need God every moment, 
oh my, then God can use you. Then God can say, hey, yes, blessed and highly favored, you are mine. Come, daughter, come, son, and use you for his glory. That is where God wants. He, one of the things, one of the uh, one of the things I believe that God is calling His church to in His hours is humility. Right? God resists the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. We got to stay humble before the Lord. We got to stay on our faces, stay on our knees. You know, just humbling ourselves before the Lord and allowing Him to work in our lives. You know, at, asking Him, crying out for His mercy and His grace. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 126, Psalm 126 and verse 5, it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And God says many of his people have been crying out, crying out for mercy, crying out because the trials and the tribulations have been so overwhelming. And he says, I've heard your cry. These are the things the Lord has been showing me. It's like many in the body of Christ have been, many of his chosen ones have been going through it. They've been going through trial after trial, test after test, tribulations. But don't be in fear. God is with you. He is with you. And he has seen your tears. It says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. This is God's word. Many times that those times when you're crying out to the Lord, something's happening in your heart. You're being changed. Your heart's being softened. And God has been Bottling up those tears. Those tears go into a bottle. And they're kept. And they're measured, I believe. And God stores them up. And I believe that there's a point where God says, it's time. It's time. My, my little one, it's time. We're his, we're his children, right? He's our father. And he says, at some point, he says, it's time. Come. I'm, I'm going to come and rescue you. I'm going to read Psalm 118. I mean, Psalm 18, because it's one of my favorite Psalms. you got to read the book of Psalms when you're going through. Psalms, Psalm 1, uh, Psalm 18. Read the book of Psalm. Read the book of Proverbs. But Psalm is for, I believe that the Word of God is how we get our strength. You know, we don't run to the bottle of liquor. We don't run to the, the, the blunt. You know, we don't run to the nightclub. You know, we don't run to the things of this world to give us our strength, right? right. To give us what we need when we're, when we're down. You don't run to the things of this world. You run into the arms of God, the arms of Jesus. You got to run to his word. You got to read his word. Run into your prayer closet. Right? So Psalm 18. This is one of the Psalms that I like to pray. And, and I believe that God answers when you pray his word. When you pray and, and speak his word. You remind God of what he has said to you. Through his word. He is, he is obligated to answer because of his word. Right? So Psalm 18. I'm going to just read a few verses here. But it says, in verse 1, it says, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I save, I be saved from my enemies. So God will save us from our enemies. When we do what? Call upon him. Right? That's what he says in verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. And believe me, you've got enemies. Believe me, if you're a child of God, you've got lots of enemies. Right? 
That's one thing I believe a lot of the churches, they don't want to talk about the enemies. They want to say we're all children of God, but we got to talk about the enemies because the enemies are coming in. The Bible says when it's the, the, the devil comes in like a flood, right? He comes in like a flood, believe me. But the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard against him. So you will be protected when the enemy comes. But it, it causes us to get into that secret place. It causes us to cry out to God. It causes us to have to go seek him because we need his help, right? Amen. We need his help. Without his help, we are not going to make it through, right? So it causes us to have to get on our knees and seek the Lord. And, you know, we sing that song, you know, I sought the Lord, right? Trust in God. And I, it's a powerful song because when you when you have sought the Lord and you saw him and sought him, he shows up. Believe me, he shows up. He may show, he may not show up the day after or he may not show up when you feel like he's gonna, you want him to show up, but he always shows up. He shows up right on time. When you cry out to God, believe me, he will answer you. He will come through for you. You got to trust him. You got to keep seeking. Keep knocking. Keep asking. You got to seek the Lord. David it says here in this psalm, he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. The Bible says that the sorrows of death compass me and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell Compass me about. The snares of death prevented me. Listen to this verse. It says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. And he heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. So it says, In his distress, he cried out. And it says, God heard him. God heard him. And in verse 7 it says, the earth shook and trembled. Think about that. If you cry out to God, it says the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills were moved and were shaken because he was wroth. God got angry. He said, wait, my child is in need. He needs help. And God got wroth, it says. And it says, there went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth he de devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. So all the darkness in your life, guess what? God is putting it under his feet. It's already under his feet, but you gotta, you got to know that he's, he's about to do it for you. He's about to show up. He is about to show up, and he is showing up. In some of your lives, he is showing up. He is showing up already, and he's starting to move. He's starting to clear things out of the way. Yep. He's starting to clarify things in your mind. He's starting to make things clear for you. He's starting to do it. Amen. 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 He's doing the work. He is showing up. He is bowing the heavens, it says in the next verse. It says he bowed the heavens also and came down. And darkness was under his feet in verse 9. And he says, he rode upon the cherub and did fly. Yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. The pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick clouds passed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the highest gave his voice. Hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them. And he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. Then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. Amen. Amen. And, he and, he, and from them which hated me, he delivered me from my strong enemy. Right? So we got enemies. We got strong enemies. But God will deliver us from those enemies. The Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. Many afflictions. You're going to go through the affliction. Right? This is not, you know, everything's cupcakes and rainbows every day of your life. You're going to go through afflictions. you got to be ready for those. you got to trust that God is with you and he's going to see you through all those things. Right? you got to walk by faith and not by what you're seeing. 
Verse 17 here says, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me. For they were too strong for me. So this is in the natural. David had enemies who were literally trying to kill him, right? These uh, enemies were physical, right? There was armies that were trying to literally kill David. They were trying to take his throne, right? So there are armies coming against us. There are, uh, in our time, I would say the armies, the Bible says in John 10, 10, it says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So you may not see your enemy. You don't have a literal army trying to kill you, right? But you have an army of demons trying to take you out, right? So they're trying to kill you. And other, spiritually, they want to make you dead. They want to make you turn away from Jesus. They want to make you go back to the world. They, make, they want to make you go drink that liquor, go smoke that weed, go back to the world. Go to the nightclub. You don't need to, to trust this God. You don't need to trust this, this, this Messiah that you're talking about. No, they don't want you to. The demons want you to turn and follow them. They want to lead you to hell. Hell is a real place. You know, we like to talk about hell because it's real. It, it brings a certain reality that we need to have. That hell is real. Amen. It is real. And the demons want to take you there with them. They know they ain't going to heaven. They know that they're, they're, that's it. The Bible says that these um, uh, the, the devil and his angels that he deceived, right? They're bound up in chains of darkness, right? But then these demons, where, where are they? These demons are from the darkness. They're from the devil. They're not from God. They're from the enemy. So they're not there for your good. They're there to deceive you. They're there to take you away from God. So you've got to know that God wants to deliver you from that darkness, right? So David had a, he had a physical attack that was coming against him. But... He had a spiritual attack also, but we got, we're got we mostly dealing with the spiritual. You know, we're not in Iraq. I mean, here in America, we're not in Iraq. We're not in uh, Africa somewhere where we got to worry about, for now, we don't got to worry about being kidnapped. We don't got to worry about, you know, uh, people shooting at us for the most part. You know, so we have the good here. We, we're we really just fighting the spiritual battle right now. We're, we're fighting, you know, our flesh. We're fighting Demons that are trying to deceive us and, and, you know, distract us and take us away from God. You know, but God will come down and rescue you from all those strong enemies. The Bible says that we have strong enemies. These are strong enemies. And it says, this is the key here. It says that they were too strong for me. Right? These enemies that are coming against us are too strong for us. But they're not too strong for God. Right? We need God. That's why you got to seek the Lord. And when you seek the Lord and you understand who you are, that you're a child of God, that God is faithful and he will deliver you, he'll rescue you, guess what happens? You start to become empowered. You start to walk as a child of God and you start to know who you are. You start to walk in the authority that Christ has given you. Christ Jesus died on the cross, rose from the dead. Christ Jesus was the Messiah. He is the Messiah. He's the Savior of the world. Guess what? When you're trusting in His power, you're trusting in His resurrection. When you're trusting in Him, you're trusting in His blood that was sacrificed, shed on that cross for you and I to have forgiveness of sins, for you and I to be born again, for you and I to be children of God because you need to be born again to be a child of God. Right? You must be born again, Jesus said, to enter the kingdom of God. You must be born again. So when you're born again and you know who you are in Christ and you're walking it in Christ's authority, the demons now are subject to you because of God's power. Not because of you. We don't have no, we don't have no strength. Right? So we are children of God. We got to walk in the power. We got to walk in the understanding and knowledge that we are children of God and that our God wants to deliver us and he is delivering us. He is rescuing us from the darkness like he rescued David here. In verse 18 it says that they prevented me in the day of my calamity but the Lord was my stay. It says he brought me forth also into a large place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. So this goes back to Mary, right? He chose Mary. He was She was highly favored of God. And he chose her for what? It says he brought David into a large place place. What's a large place? Sounds like a, a a good thing, right? Not a bad thing. This is a good thing. He brought him into a large place. It's just like Mary was chosen for a large task. We're being chosen in this time right now to do a great thing for the Lord. 
And I believe that we got to know who we are. Know that we're blessed and highly favored. That God has got our back. God is going to rescue us from whatever we're going through. He's going to protect us from the things that are coming against us. Right? Amen. These things, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Did God come to steal, kill, and destroy? It said the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. So Jesus said that I am come that you may have what? Life. 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 Amen. Life and life more abundant. So God wants to give you abundant life. He wants to give you a blessed life. It may, may not be an easy life, but it's going to be a blessed life. Because you know who your savior, savior is. You know where you're going. Amen. You know where you're going. You know you're going to be with the Lord for all eternity. You know that nothing shall by any means hurt you. Right? Because you know you pass from death to life. You're now alive forevermore. You're going to be with the Lord for eternity. That's our hope. That's our trust. Our trust is not in the things of the world. It's in Christ. It's in Jesus and what he did. Right? Amen. 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 I didn't hear you. Amen. 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 There we go. Praise the Lord. So God is good. He's faithful. We're seeking him. Daily. We are believing him. We are trusting in him. We are trusting in the finished work that he's already done for us. So trust and believe his word. Read this song. Go back through the Gospels. You know, we're in the Gospels right now in our Bible study. We started this week uh, in uh, the book of Matthew. We started Matthew this week, so we're going to be going through the Gospels. You know, I've been saying for actually a couple of years that I was going to do a, uh, some Facebook videos. And YouTube, we're on YouTube now. And we're, we're going to be doing some videos and going through the red letters of Jesus. And we're going to do that. We're going to start doing that here in the coming uh, days and weeks. We're going to start doing some teachings and going through the red letters of the Gospels to show people who the Jesus of the Bible is. Right now, we're in the book of Matthew. You know, if you want to come join us, we're here in McKinney. We do Bible studies on Wednesday evenings here in McKinney. And, um, you know, I encourage everyone. The Gospels is you get to really see who Jesus is was, who he came to be. And when you read the Gospels, you will start to see, man, when, when he chose these disciples, when he chose those 12, right, they were blessed and highly favored to be chosen for that time. Did they know they were going to be chosen to do it? They didn't know. They were just going to work. They were doing their lives. They were just going along. And then God came and just showed up to them and said, hey, come out of the boat. I'm going to make you a fisher man. Right? And that's what God is doing right now. He's saying, you're my child. Come. I got a plan for you. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. I got, I got great things in store for you. And you've had to go through the trials. Some of us have to go through the tribulations. We've been going through those testings. We've been going through so that we can get to where God is taking us. You got to go through it to get to it. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. You got to go through it. Right? You, nobody just puts somebody to, you're not just going to go straight to the top of the mountain. You have to. You got to go through it first. You got to go up. You got to climb that mountain, right? If you got to climb, it's going to be. It's not going to be easy to go up that mountain, right? You got. You got to trust the Lord. You got to climb. You got to dig in and and trust and believe and pray and fast and seek the Lord. You got to humble yourself. We got to do these things. We got to cry out to God when the trouble comes and the, the enemies are camped around us and the enemies are attacking. We got to trust Jesus. We got to trust God. We got to cry out to Him. We got to, uh, uh, you know, walk with Him. You know, dwell in the secret place. That's what the secret place is. When you're dwelling in the secret place, you're dwelling there because you need that secret place. The enemies are coming and you need to be dwelling there so that the enemies cannot come in in that secret place. He can't. If you're staying and dwelling in that secret place, those enemies may come but they won't be able to harm you. They won't be able to keep you because you're, you're dwelling with the Lord. You're in that secret place with Him. So I believe that those attacks a lot of times make you go into that secret place, right? To make, they make you have to stay there in that secret place. And the more you stay in that secret place, the more peace you have, the more joy you have, the more you're walking in His righteousness, You're because you are in the Spirit. You're staying with the Lord. The Lord is leading you. He's guiding you. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So if you're a good man because you're trusting in God, guess what? You're being ordered by God and you're moving forward the way God wants you to move forward. And if you're still here right now, Still trusting and still believing, that means you have passed. You have made it through some of these tests and trials. I believe that the season that we're coming into is going to be a great season for the church. 
I believe that we are about to see miracles, signs, and wonders like we've never seen. I believe that, especially here in America. Because other countries already see a lot of miracles. They see signs and wonders all the time. They walk in the supernatural in these countries because it's either they trust God or they trust the devil and they go to the witch doctors and they see the power in God and they see the power of the devil. So they choose in other countries. Here, we've been deceived thinking that you know, God doesn't have any power. Because most people don't even know the supernatural. They don't even know that God can do things. They don't even believe God can heal them. So a lot of times we're not even walking in faith here in America. We have to believe. We have to trust God to see his hand move. We've got to see the power of God demonstrated in our midst. And we have seen it many times by God's grace. We've seen God heal the sick. We've seen God do miracles. We've got to walk in these things. We've got to walk in the power of these days. And God's going to show up. He's going to show up and show out in his church in these last days. Believe me. He's going to show the devil up. <clears throat> because the devil's doing all these lying signs and wonders. But believe me, God is going to do his wonders that are going to be way greater than what the devil can do. Amen. Amen? Amen. Right. God is going to do many great things, especially for his people in these last days. It says Janus and Jambres. I'm just reminded of the story all the time. Janus and Jambres, right? Moses went before God, went before Pharaoh, and he threw down his rod, right? And what happened to that rod? Does anybody know? Rod turned into a snake, right? But what happened when the magicians, Janus and Jambres, the Bible says there. So what happens when they threw their, their rods down? They became snakes too, right? But what does it say? That Moses' is snake ate up the other snakes, right? So whose power is greater? God. Yes, God. Jesus, the Christ, our Lord, our Master. He is, he is the great I am. The I am that I am. Guess what? He is greater than whatever the enemy can do. So whatever power the enemy has or thinks he has, it's not greater than God's power. So the things that you see the enemy doing in this earth, believe me, God is about to show the devil up. He's about to show up on your behalf, on my behalf. He's about to show up in his church. His glory is going to be seen upon us. He's going to show up and show up. Believe me, he's getting ready to do mighty things for his people. Great deliverance is coming to the church. Great deliverance and great restoration is coming to the church. We're going to see a mighty outpouring of God's spirit because we need it in the darkness that's coming. And the darkness is already here and coming. We're going to need his power, his glory, his presence. So we are, God's going to show people that we are blessed and highly favored. We are about to see the hand of God in your life. And people are going to see that you are blessed and highly favored. They're going to know it. They're going to say, wait, this is a child of God. Hey, how come this man's not going through like we are? This is a child of God. How come this, this lady has peace? And joy, when I'm suffering over here, it's because God, because you're blessed and highly favored of God. So believe God for what he's about to do in your life. Believe him and trust him. And you're going to see his hand move in your life like never before. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to pray and trust Jesus. Trust God. Quick word today. And I believe just God just wanted to encourage us. The Bible says in Galatians 6 and 7, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We see a lot of these people in the church, in the uh, church world, a lot of people are reaping what they have sown. They're starting to reap now what they have sown. But guess what? We are about to reap the good things that we've sown because we are children of God. We've been sowing good things. We've been sowing in tears. So guess what? We're going to reap in joy. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. We're going to reap in joy. So God's going to show people how blessed you are because you've been faithful. God's going to show people who has been sowing terrible and bad things throughout these few years. Some of them five years, some of them ten years, some of them twenty years, they've been sowing corruption, right? And then you see what's happening now. A lot of these preachers, a lot of people, they're reaping what they've sown. You know, they're reaping. But guess what? You're about to reap what you've sown. Amen? Amen. Amen. You're about to reap what you've sown. 
And if you know you've been sowing, like, Lord, asking the Lord, like, how come everybody's treating me like this when I'm always trying to be good, I'm trying to be faithful, I'm trying to help everybody, and then I keep getting, getting treated like this. Guess what? You're about to reap what you have sown. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for what he's doing. Father, we thank you for today's word. Thank you for the brothers and sisters gathered together here and those who are online. Father, pour out your spirit on your people. God, continue to encourage your people. Bless your people. Father, those who you have called by your name, God, those who have been in the secret place, those who have been trusting in you and believing in you, God, those who have not given up, you said don't, don't, don't be weary in well-doing because you will reap if you faint not. Father, bless your people. God, bless those who have been sowing in tears. God, let them reap in joy. Father, pour out your spirit in your church, God. Pour out your spirit like never before. In the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you today and we just rend our hearts before you, God. As we want you to continue to work in us, God. Continue to work in us until Christ is formed in us. Father, that we would walk in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. That we would walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father, that we would be so filled with your Spirit. God, that we would be unrecognizable to even our family members, to those around us, God. That people would be like, man, this, this person must have God. They must be a child of God. They, people need to see your presence on our lives. God. They need to see that you are with us, Father. And we know that you're about to show up for us. We know that you're about to do mighty things through us. through us. Father, get us ready and let us be ready for what you're about to do. Give us the grace and the strength to walk in and walk through those doors that you're about to open for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, equip us for these end times. God, anoint us for these end times. Because you said it's the anointing that breaks the yokes. God, people need deliverance. People need healing. People need salvation. People need you, Lord, in this world. They need you, Lord, and we need you. Father, use us for your glory. Use us for your purpose. Get us ready for your coming. Prepare your church for the signs and wonders that you're about to do. God, even when they are signs and wonders that may not look good to the world, God, we know that they're good because we know that you're working in people to bring them to repentance. We know that you're working in all these things to bring people into the kingdom. God, and we're going to be there to comfort them. Father, let us be ready to bring them in. Let us be ready to comfort those who are afflicted. Let us be ready to give an answer for the hope that we have in Christ Jesus. Father, have your way in our lives. Let your perfect will be done. Prepare our hearts and our minds for the things that you're about to do, God, for the, the mind-blowing miracles that you're about to do. Father, prepare us. Let us be ready, God. In Jesus' name. You said in your word that you're going to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can even ask or think according to the power that works in us. Father, your word is true. We believe, God, that your plans for us are better than the plans that we have for ourselves. And we want to walk in your plan. We want to walk in your ways. We want to do your will and not our own. Help us to continue to endure hardness as a good soldier. Help us to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Help us to continue to believe you and trust you in these last days. In the mighty and matchless name of your son, Yeshua. Bless your people. Deliver your people today. God, those who have been, those who are, uh, uh, need deliverance, God, bring deliverance, bring healing, bring restoration today. In Jesus' name, pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit, God. Let people, your people, get delivered and healed. I pray that those who are in the world still, bring them in. Let them get saved today, God. Bring them to repentance. Grant them repentance. In Jesus' name. 
In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the word today. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, God. This is all about you and what you're doing. Lord, we want to decrease so that you can increase in our lives. We are dust on this earth, and we need you. We need you in this hour, and we trust you, Lord, that you have great plans for our lives. We trust you, we thank you, and we love you, Lord. We give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you, Facebook family. God bless you. Uh, we're going to be on YouTube as well. Post some videos on YouTube. God bless you. Uh, if you want to sow into the ministry, God has uh, given hope. Hopefully, you've gotten some encouragement today. Hopefully, you've been blessed by this word. And I pray that you get saved. If you're not born again, you need Jesus. Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the Mashiach, as they say in Hebrew. He is the Son of the living God. He is God who came in the flesh. He came to this earth. God took the form of a man to come to this earth to show you and I how to live, to walk this walk out. He lived sinless. He lived sinless with no sin. And he went to that cross and was crucified. He took a beating. He took a punishment. He took a scourging. It says skin ripped off of his back. He had a crown, a crown of thorns put on his head. Thorns sticking into his head. He took the punishment that you and I deserve. He took it all on himself. He who never sinned took your sins and my sins on him, on himself. And he was crucified. He was obedient unto death, it says in the Bible. He was obedient unto death. He knew he had to die. And he took the punishment and went to that cross so that you and I could now have eternal life. You and I could now be born again. You and I now have salvation. We have now passed from death to life because of what Jesus did. You got to believe in him though. You got to trust in what he did at the cross. And you have to humble yourself and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That he did all that. That he rose from the dead after three days. He rose up from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He's now seated at the right hand of the Father. That's what the Bible says. You have to believe it. We believe it by faith. You may not see anything, but you believe by faith. You trust God. And believe his word. And the Bible says that you will have <coughs> eternal life. You will have everlasting life. If you believe and confess with your mouth, then go get baptized under water. God wants you to be baptized. That's what Jesus said. That's what the book of Acts says. Repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Go get baptized under water. And then you walk this walk out. Read your Bible. Pray. Seek the Lord. Fast. That means get away from food sometimes. And believe me, God is going to bless your life. You can get saved today. Just do what I said. Believe. Confess it. And talk to the Lord. Get on your knees. Humble yourself. God, the Bible says God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. We got to humble ourselves before God. The Bible says, if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he will exalt us in due time. God is going to exalt you. God is going to raise you up. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, praise God for the word. If you've been blessed, if you've been uh, blessed by this word, by the, the ministry, come and uh, sow into the ministry. Uh, my son put the information there on the screen. Uh, you got the information there. You can sow. You got the information. Sow into the ministry. Please keep us in prayer. Please pray for us as we 
need your prayers. We need the prayers of the saints. And we are praying for you. So, prayer is our weapon. Prayer is our weapon. The Bible says pray without ceasing. We got to pray, guys. The Bible says the effectual and fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You must pray. We got to be a praying church. The Bible says that Jesus, he was flipping over those tables. He said, make not my house a den of thieves. He said, make this house is a house of prayer. So we want to be houses of prayer. You are God's temple. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Be a person of prayer. Trust the Lord. Believe his word. And you will endure to the end. Amen. Praise God. God bless you, faithful family. God bless you, YouTube. We'll see you on the next video. God willing, we'll see you next Sunday. Uh, God bless you. See you then.